watching the best. Fox 10 News. The fallout from the sober living crackdown continues as the state suspends payments to nearly 100 providers since August, accusing them of Medicaid fraud. And tonight, Fox 10 investigates a situation at a Tucson hotel where roughly 200 tenants are on the streets because of a sober living program that stopped paying rent. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum has been covering this all year, and he's here now with the Phoenix Connection. Justin. John Ellen, we received multiple tips about 200 tenants being evicted from a hotel that was used for a sober living facility. But we've learned these residents did not get any services from the program and that the provider allegedly recruiting them is connected to the Valley, recently suspended by the state's Medicaid agency for allegations of fraud. On a rainy Wednesday morning in Tucson, Outreach workers from several organizations set up in the parking lot of Ocotillo Apartments and Hotel. It's today residents have been expecting after receiving a notice from property management. I had a feeling it was happening to me. I said it's too easy, to, too good to be true, but I said I'm not going to pass it by, that's for sure. I was hurting at the time. I needed it extremely. Howard Spence believes he was tricked by the people who recruited him to live here. Some understood the sober living program to be called Happy Times, offering free housing and food. We went for it, to stay off the streets. We have an addiction, but they never gave us any help for our addiction. This man did not want to be identified, nor did this woman. I was trying to change myself and better myself, you know, and, and try to get out of the situation that I'm going through right now with depression and what they did is they never did help me. This was booked out as a sober living facility or some of the rooms were booked out as a sober living facility and therefore there are people trying to work their way through that process and that's what we know. But the residents we spoke to all share a similar story and the key to joining the community. Be a member of Arizona's health care cost containment system better known as Access, the state's Medicaid agency. Just go to Access Insurance, change insurance from one plan to another. But they made us change our Access, our insurance into native issues. They told me that I had to change my health plan, my Access plan. The American Indian Health Plan is under the umbrella of Access, specifically for Native American clients, a plan the Arizona Attorney General's office is familiar with used by fraudsters in a multi-million dollar scheme to bill the state for services rarely provided by shady sober living homes after acquiring the personal information of clients. In this case, the city of Tucson says Ocotillo management stopped receiving rent money from Happy Times, asking residents to pay up or leave. Advocates for tenants came to stop unlawful evictions. We walked right into uh, an eviction that was going on. Their stuff, their cat was outside, all of their stuff was outside. As these women were still packing up their stuff, they were being boarded inside. Physically boarded, you could hear the, the screwdrivers going into the wall to board them in. And luckily, we were able to intervene. Residents say they remember the provider that brought them here go by the name New Direction in the past. They had told me at the front office that um, New Direction had changed their name to Happy Times. It was a total, the same people with different names. New Direction Behavioral Health and Services is licensed with the state, but you can't find Happy Times in the Care Check database. Fox 10 obtained the notice of suspension, accusing New Direction Behavioral Health of fraud allegations, including a pattern of member steering, changing members' health plans to the American Indian Health Plan after previously billed services were denied. The Office of Inspector General also accusing New Direction of failing to disclose ownership of other access suspended entities and billing for services on days when the facility was closed. The address on the suspension letter brings us to an office in Phoenix near Southern and 19 Avenues, where a behavioral health provider by another name is located. The owner of this clinic told me off camera that New Direction moved out of the suite months ago and he is no longer associated with the suspended provider. Did you ever think you'd be caught up in this? No. No, because I've seen him so sincere and all friendly and everything, but now you can't trust nobody nowadays. Fox 10 learned that Ali Kalumba is a principal member of New Direction's LLC. Happy Times Home Care LLC and the director of a foreign for-profit business called Mercy Hands Human Services, according to the Arizona Corporation Commission. I spoke to Columba on the phone, but he did not want to elaborate about the situation at the Ocotillo Apartments, 
asking me to call him back another day. Some people at the property told Fox 10 about intake being done in Phoenix before being brought into Tucson. Is there concern that with the, the access scandal and the crisis going on throughout the state and the crackdown uh, that's happening, that this situation may become more normal and you guys will have to prepare for this even more? I don't, we don't have knowledge of that. I don't know if that would be the case. I would tell you that if that was, I would hope that with the relationship that we have with our state partners and our local partners that we would find out about that and that we would be ready for that if it were to happen. And we did get an update on what's unfolded in just the past few days at the Ocotillo Hotel. The city of Tucson says someone vandalized the power supply, fire suppression system, smoke alarms and fire extinguishers. A code enforcement determined the property was just unfit for occupants. Um, and now basically all those people had to be vacated off the premises. So didn't really get to fight the eviction in court the legal way because we know some of them you know, didn't want to be unlawfully evicted. They stayed put, but with this situation, the hazardous situation, now they're just off the premises. So unfortunate situation there. You have tried to talk to the owner and did talk to him briefly. Yeah, very briefly, he did not seem to acknowledge anything about what was going on or elaborate about the issue, but he did not deny that he was the owner or associated with New Direction Behavioral Health Services. He said he would talk to us at another time possibly, and after that we've had trouble getting a hold of him. But the key thing to remember is that according to the suspension letter, New Direction is tied to other suspended entities and they failed to disclose that. So the question is, how far does this go? How many more people are impacted across the state? It's not just one entity mm -hmm. suspended by access. Yeah, you kind of cracked open the case here in Phoenix, but now obviously we saw that in Tucson. It, it's starting to kind of unravel elsewhere. We've heard about so many unlicensed and licensed sober living homes here in the Valley, hundreds of them, but this is the first time we've really heard about a property in Tucson and people impacted and displaced in the Tucson area. And even the city of Tucson officials said this was unique for us. This was different. Uh, we've had evictions happen, but not something related to a sober living mm -hmm. program being shut down. So who knows if this is really just the beginning. We've seen that they don't provide services. That's one way they're bilking the taxpayer. But to not even pay rent on their property, how many times have you seen that and how long can that go on until somebody catches on? And something like this can go on for months if it's not reported, if it's not reported to uh, access or the attorney general's office. It really takes eyes to see the red flags mm -hmm. and say, we are not getting services. Uh, we don't know what's going on. They took our information and signed us up for access. But if you're not receiving services, that is the first red flag. Oh, so yeah. we'll see, you know, it, it varies from case to case, but these investigations also take some time. Okay.